Hey there traders, welcome back to your daily trading and market recap where we trade the E-mini futures. The levels you see on this chart of the SPY will be our baselines for entering trades in the E-mini futures today during the open session. Check out the description below this video to learn more about the mission of this channel and some background on this trading strategy. My name is Sam. Today is Wednesday, October 9, 2024. It's 8, 10 a.m. Eastern as I'm making this pre-market video. The levels are a little different than usual this morning because of where the SPY is in terms of price and time. I don't feel comfortable including all the levels I calculated this morning. I don't want to insinuate that a big move can happen, but if it does, or even if price trends in one direction all day in kind of a slow motion type of thing, I don't want to minimize the risk of being caught in trades that get out of the money too much. Normally, the levels I identify have a very good chance of causing reactions to price, that is, if the market is behaving normally. And today might be perfectly fine and normal, but they've been hitting this overhead resistance area a lot over the past few weeks. I really don't know if the bulls will win out and break out into new highs, or if the bears will succeed in pushing price down again for another reset. They're at a place in price and time where either can happen, and maybe happen in a big way. So, there are not many levels on the chart as a result of my opinion about this. Maybe nothing unusual will happen and price doesn't move around a lot, and as a result, no levels get hit and no trades get entered, and that is perfectly fine in my book. I don't feel that I need to be in a trade all the time. The two levels that are in light blue lines, 573.15 and 572.78, are like the pivot or fulcrum area we had on the board yesterday. This time, it's more of a zone. I see this area as the place where bulls need to stay above to remain bullish. If they do start to get above and start closing candles above that zone around 575 higher up, then that could be even more bullish, but that zone should be a roadblock to price for at least a while, depending on how price gets there. And below this pivot area, the light blue lines, is where the bears might be able to push price down a little farther. It's the way I see it right now as of 8.12, 8.13 a.m. Eastern which is more than an hour before the opening bell. A lot can change between now and then. So the bottom line is, I don't see this pivot area between 573.15 and 572.78 as a tradable area, at least not in the way that I like to trade these levels. Also at 2 p.m. Eastern, there are FOMC meeting minutes being released. So that information could be a catalyst to get the market to move a little. So this is something to be aware of. We'll come back to this chart after the closing bell to talk about what happened analyze any trades taken as a result of these levels, catch you on the other side. It is now almost 10 p.m. The bulls got the upper hand and pushed price up today. That was the prevailing idea since the big picture had still been bullish. As we mentioned in last night's video, it was likely that today was going to be the time that the bulls could finally break above the resistance. They've been fighting for a while, so they had a good climb. And look where they stalled out, right at our level of 577.42. So how would you have traded these levels? First, this area in the lighter blue lines, if you recall, was my reference zone from this morning. I wanted to see them close some candles of significance above this area to confirm that the bulls were probably in control. It really wasn't an area I was willing to trade. So no trade in this area, although it was good support and trading alongside right after 9.45 a.m. would have worked well if you chose to do it. I'm just saying I did not take the trade. I wanted to see them get up to this zone here, and if they did it right away, I was ready to go short there. I had an order in the system right in the middle here. But based on the way price did get up to this zone, would you have traded it? If they came right up into it, both of these levels, without slowing down or stalling, the answer is yes. But since they stopped here, went sideways, kind of uh, stalled out, you'd want to be sure this area was going to was like poised to provide the right kind of resistance at this point in time. Like I said, I did have an order, I think it was a 575.70 right there in the middle. When I show the live recording of the activity today, you'll see me hovering right here just to see if they're going to come up to this area and fill the order. But the way they consolidated and did not just run up and hit this area gave me some pause. I canceled the order, did not take the trade. That turned out to be the right decision because, as you can see, had you traded each level, the extremes of this zone, or even one right in the middle, like I was planning on doing, a short trade in this area would have not worked out very well. But they got above and came back down, and yes, you guessed it, this whole zone is good for a recycle trade, this time for a long position. So if you chose to, you could have traded 575.92 for a bounce, and that would have worked. You got your first base hit there very quickly. And then when we came down into 575.54, that would have been your next trade, but they came up two pennies short. Here it was around 
five minutes before one o'clock. Two pennies short, took off, that's a near miss. So you would not want to attempt a trade again on the long side at that level, although they did work. It did work out here, but if you're playing by the rules, then that's off the table. It would not have been a trade. So really just one official trade. It doesn't look like much here, but that was it at this zone. So this zone is now off the table for the rest of the day. The next potential trade was up at 577.42. They did react there, but unfortunately they hit it right after 3.30 p.m. So if you're playing by the rules, that's too late to take the trade. I did not take it. In fact, I didn't take any trades because when they came back down here for this recycling area, I was at lunch, had a pretty long lunch and just missed it, unfortunately. And I'll show you the recording of that. Nothing to see, but just to kind of give some proof to the fact that I didn't take any trades. Clearly, this was a good level. They reacted there, would have given a nice solid base hit, but sticking to the rules, it's a no trade. Started recording this 9.51. You see what time it is. They'd already come down, back up, and I'm starting to think, okay, they look, they could look bullish. I had this sped up quite a bit, but I'm just going to scrub ahead and show you what I was doing when they got up to this zone. Expected, I had an order right here at 575.70. So that's kind of me waiting for them to get into the middle of this zone, sell short with a couple contracts. I end up canceling it right there. And that's when the lines go dotted. That's kind of my indication that I'm going to leave this alone to see what happens. You know, not sure they were going to bounce back or pull back at the rate they were going. It looked like they could climb higher. So at this point, I've got my sights set on 577.42. I might have had an order there for a while. I can't remember, but they didn't get very close pull back down, and then I was at lunch, completely not looking at my screens all this time here. So no trade. You can see nothing's happening in the E-mini chart all the way until the next time they attempted 577.40. And that was toward the end of the day, as you know. The level from the morning was 577.42. I just had brought it down two pennies. That was going to be where I was going to sell. Just a nice round number there although adding the five cent buffer is not a problem. So I had an order in pretty close to this point and then I canceled it because it was right at 3.30. I'll back up and you can see right before 3.30. So there we go. Look at the time. Order's in there, but as soon as 3.30 comes around, I'm just not going to risk it. So make the line uh, dotted, made the level dotted and just canceled the order and just watched them pull back and realize that would have worked. There's See me hovering right there at the 40 cent mark, which is the quote of four points, just to see if it would have worked and it would have, but I was not in the trade. So over here on the daily chart, what can we say? Well, obviously they're above the resistance they've been fighting and they're at all time highs again. And I do have some kind of formula derived levels and up here, but um, we'll talk about that in the morning and where they're at. I mean, they'll be on the board in the morning. So really, there's kind of nothing but just uncharted territory up here. They can keep going. At some point, they're going to turn around again, and it becomes a function of timing and a few other things, the way I like to look at it. Um, we can maybe look at the hourly chart to see if anything else pops out at us. Not really. There's no signals on this chart. Might as well look at other ones. Here's a two-hour chart. Nothing. Three-hour chart. Four hours. Yep. So, and then... In the post market, they're at 577.14. So they're still pretty strong and uh, they could continue, but we'll find out by the morning. We're going to probably have some better uh, ideas. Also, I believe there's more data releases coming out uh, tomorrow and Friday, definitely tomorrow. Yeah, it's before the market opens, 8.30 a.m. Eastern, uh, both Thursday and Friday. And actually, there's a 10 o'clock data release also. So we have a few data releases coming out, some uh, CPI, some PPI numbers. That could affect things, but we'll see. The levels will be the levels, and we'll find out in the morning what that looks like. Tracking log should be pretty straightforward. One base hit, you can read all these notes, which explain what I just showed you on the live recording. So four ES points or more was possible, and no trades for me. Just wasn't in the cards today. I missed them when I was away from my computer, and I really wasn't willing to take the other trades based on my own rules, and it paid off. But that's a wrap for today. Thank you for following along. Uh, not very exciting today, although we are at new all-time highs, so there's something there. We'll probably see some fireworks sooner than later. At this point, it's just one day at a time. If you had the levels from this morning, you tried anything, hopefully you were able to pull some dollars and points out of the market. If you found value in today's recap, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Feel free to drop a comment or ask any questions. I appreciate the feedback. So I'll talk with you tomorrow in the next recap. Have a great rest of your day.